We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Doesn't matter if the snow is falling. back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Christy Ann. So today's video is my most requested video every single year. It is my DIY room decor video for Christmas. I love making these videos and every year I say these are my new favorites, but again, these are my new favorite DIYs I've ever done. I hope you guys love them as much as I do. And this year's video is completely different than any of the ones I've done in the past. I was really inspired by things I saw at Anthropology, Urban Outfitters, and places like that. So I hope you guys will enjoy this. If you do, please give this video a big thumbs up because it honestly makes my day when I see you guys enjoy my content. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and right next to it is a little notification bell. If you click that, you can see whenever I post a new video. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. DIY I'm showing you guys are these gold foil ornaments. So to make them, I grabbed some of these clear plastic ornaments from Michaels and Walmart, but you can pretty much grab them anywhere this time of year. And I removed the metal cap from the top and added in about a tablespoon of acrylic paint. I used two different colors for these. I used this ballet slipper pink color from Martha Stewart as well as a cream color. And then you just want to turn the ornament around until you have all of the sides coated with the paint. Then I just took my ornament and turned it upside down onto a piece of paper towel to remove some of the excess paint. So then I just repeated those same steps with some cream colored paint in some smaller ornaments. For the gold leaf, you need something called adhesive size, which you can grab at any craft store or order online. And you wanna brush this on super thinly. If you have too much on, it won't become tacky. It'll get kind of goopy and your gold leaf won't stick. So after about five minutes, I added on little sections of gold leaf and then let it set completely to dry. So then after it was completely dry, I took a dry brush and removed removed any of the excess gold leaf and the brush also polishes the leaf so it ends up looking super shiny. I love this next DIY. I saw some similar trees at Anthropology and wanted to try to DIY them. So I grabbed these wooden blocks from Michaels and then painted them with this amazing gold paint that I'm obsessed with. You guys have seen this so many times in my videos. This next part was a little bit more complicated for me, but I took two of these paper mache cones that I grabbed from Michaels and I made a stencil to trace onto my faux fur. So after I figured it out, it was pretty easy. I just took my cone and rolled it around on a piece of parchment paper and traced all along the sides of it so that I had something that would perfectly cover my cone. And you wanna leave a little bit of excess, so air on the side of a stencil that's a little bit too big rather than too small, and you'll be good. So I cut out my stencil to use on my faux fur fabric, which I picked up at Joanne's Craft Store. And you wanna make sure that the faux fur is pointing downwards so you don't have your faux fur in the wrong direction. I did this wrong the first time, so I'm just putting it out there. So at this stage, it's super easy. Trace your stencil onto the faux fur fabric and use a pair of sharp scissors to cut them out. I found a trick while I was doing this DIY for how to cut faux fur. In the past, I found the fur would end up looking choppy where I would make my cuts. And this time what I did was I slid the scissors underneath the faux fur as close to the fabric as possible so that the ends of the fur wouldn't get in my cuts. And that way your faux fur stays looking nice and doesn't end up looking choppy. Yay, now for the easy part. All you have to do at this stage is glue the faux fur to the cone. If you have any excess fabric, just cut that off at the end. And a way to hide the seam for where the ends of the fabric meet is to direct the faux fur over the seam so it kind of blends in and you can't really tell where the seam is. So then I took a couple different sized dowels. One of them I grabbed from Lowe's because I needed it to be extra long and I just cut it into the size I needed with some scissors. Then I coated one of the ends with a ton of hot glue and just stuck that to the bottom of my cone. For the last step, I drilled a little hole inside of the cube to make the stick extra secure and filled it up with some hot glue and put the dowel inside until it was dry. This part is optional. You don't have to use a hole, but it will definitely make it more secure. Busy, yeah, For this next 
next DIY, I saw these ornaments at Target that looked exactly like these, so I wanted to try to make them myself. So I grabbed these letters from Walmart, but you can also get them from any craft store. The first thing I did was trace them onto the back of some felt because I wouldn't be able to do that after the fur was already attached. So I cut out the letters and set my felt off to the side. I did the exact same thing and traced my letter onto the back of my faux fur fabric. Also keeping in mind the direction I want the faux fur to be in when I trace my letter. Also, another important thing to keep in mind is that you wanna do the inverse of the letter. You want it to be backwards when you trace it onto the faux fur. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a letter that is backwards. While I was cutting this out, I left a little bit of a perimeter around my letter so that I could glue the sides over after. So then to make sure I could fold the sides over, I went around the letter and cut out little notches. Then I just took my letter and added some hot glue to it and worked in sections gluing the letter down and then went around the edges gluing and folding with my scissors because I burned myself like 15 times during this video. Ta-da, you have your faux fur ornament. But to finish it off, I wanted to make it look a little bit extra nice in case you see the back of the letter. So I glued down the felt that we cut out earlier to the back of it as well as a gold thread so that I could hang it from a tree and that's it. This DIY is so easy and super, super cute. So this next DIY was inspired by a wreath from Anthropology, and I'm obsessed with it. I love how it turned out. So I'm starting off by making some pom-pom makers and there are a few different ways you can do this, but I find that this method is the best way to get a nice looking pom-pom. So I'm taking a circular object and tracing it onto some cardboard two times so that I have two discs. And then I'm taking a smaller round object and tracing that in the center of my discs and then cutting them out, leaving about an inch gap. I would definitely recommend making a few different size pom-pom makers so that you have varying sizes of pom-poms. I made the majority of my pom-poms using these pom-pom makers that I got on Amazon because the process was quite a bit faster and I will link them below for you guys. They're actually super easy to use, but you can definitely do them using these cardboard molds. For this DIY, you're gonna need a ton of yarn. The first method I'm gonna show you guys is using the cardboard pom-pom maker. So I'm taking both of the discs and laying them on top of each other and wrapping a ton of yarn around the cardboard. The thicker that this is, the poofier and more fluffy and nice your pom-poms will be, so definitely don't skimp out on the yarn. At the end, you're gonna take some scissors and slide it between the two discs and just cut along the edge. After that, you wanna take an extra piece of yarn, slide it between those two discs and tie a knot. So you wanna tie it really tight so that your pom-pom is secure. And then afterwards, you can remove the little discs and there you have your first pom-pom. So for the second method, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the actual pom-pom maker, and this is super, super easy. So I just started off by opening up the arms and wrapping the yarn around two of the arms. And the thicker that you wrap your yarn, again, the thicker your pom-pom's going to be and more full. So you wanna do a really thick layer. I pretty much maxed mine out. When you get to the point where you can't wrap anymore, you can go ahead and close the arms into the pom-pom maker and it will hold it in place. Then I just cut my yarn and repeated the same step on the other side. Once I was done wrapping both arms with the yarn, I took some really sharp scissors and cut between where the two arms meet. You wanna cut between there on both of the sides and take an extra piece of yarn, wrap that in between where those two arms meet and tie really tightly and create a knot. After that, you can open up both arms and remove the pom-pom maker. The pom-poms will actually need a little bit of a trim. So you just wanna take some sharp scissors and go around the edges, trimming any of the pieces of yarn that are just a little bit too long. So for my wreath, I grabbed one of these styrofoam wreath forms from Michaels and took my pom-poms and some hot glue and just started gluing my pom-poms to the wreath form. The majority of my pom-poms are either white or cream, but then I added in some pretty colored pink ones as an accent color, and I love how this turned out. I think it is so cute, and I think it's also something that you could have up year round. Once I was done hot gluing all of my pom-poms to my wreath, I went and added a few of these little tiny ornaments that I picked up at Target to the wreath for a little bit of extra Christmassy flair. I think this would also be such an amazing DIY gift for someone. You could leave out the ornaments and someone could put this up for year-round use. The parcels are all under the tree, right where they should be. 
the last DIY, I started off by making a tree stencil by folding a piece of cardstock in half and then drawing half of a tree onto it. And I did it this way so that my tree would be perfectly symmetrical. Then I just went ahead and cut that out. So the main component of this DIY is this deco foil that I picked up online at Joann's and Amazon and it's the most amazing stuff ever. So for this DIY, I'm going with the copper colored one. I'm starting off by taking a piece of tape and creating a little loop with it and then I'm touching it repeatedly to remove some of the adhesiveness and adding it to my Christmas tree. And the reason I'm doing this is so that it doesn't stick too much to the foil. So with the shiny side up of the foil, I'm taking my Christmas tree stencil and just using a white gel pen to trace my tree onto the foil. And you can use a marker or a pen for this step. I just found that this white pen stood out really well. And then I just went ahead and cut out all my Christmas trees. The pillowcase that I used for this was actually from Ikea. I've used other pillowcases in the past where this worked perfectly well, but the texture on this pillowcase was really problematic, so I would not recommend using this. So I just started off by laying out my trees to get an idea of what kind of design I wanted. And then I took my deco foil liquid adhesive. This is kind of the key component here. You need this to make sure that the foil will actually adhere to your fabric. So you wanna do a generous coat and in this case, I had to do a super generous coating because of the texture on the pillow. And you wanna wait about 30 seconds before you add your foil to the pillowcase. After that, you wanna cover it with a piece of parchment paper and iron it for about 20 to 30 seconds and then let it sit to cool. I just moved on and did all of my Christmas trees until they were completely done. And then I went ahead and took some tweezers and removed the top layer of plastic, which is protecting the foil. I am so happy with how this turned out. And I think this would be the greatest gift for someone. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below which DIY was your favorite. If you guys try anything out, I really wanna see what you guys come up with. Send me a picture on Instagram or Twitter. I love seeing all your guys' recreations. I hope you guys are all having an amazing time this holiday season and lots of fun. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Merry Christmas.